Hi, this is a set of video tutorials and this is the first in the set for developing your own experiment using the Pebble system. Pebble can be downloaded at pebble.sourceforge.net and um, when you install it you'll get a launcher screen that looks sort of like this. Um, at the very beginning there will be a list of files here and if you click twice on tutorials it'll open up uh, the tutorials folder and we're going to be walking through all the examples in make simple experiment. So click here and you can see that each of the tutorials is available here. If you want to um, just open up the folder that all of these are using your own uh, Windows Manager you can hit dot slash and say open selected this should be in Documents, Pebble, EXP 2.0, Tutorials, Make Simple Experiment. And so any of these can be opened up by clicking on these and opening them in a text editor or selecting it within here and, and hitting Open, Edit, Selected. I'd recommend that if you're using Windows, you use something like Notepad++ to uh, and set that as your editor. Um, don't use WordPad or Notepad if you can help it because the formatting of those will be uh, less than optimal and you, you'll end up getting frustrated. So um, we're going to start with this first tutorial and I'm going to open up that tutorial just by looking at this. And uh, this is basically the simplest program or experiment you can run in Pebble. All it does is open up a window and wait for you to make a response with the keyboard. Um, so the basics are every Pebble program must have a function called start. Start has to begin with a capital S and you create a function by using the define keyword and then the name of the function you want to use and then in parentheses the parameters of that function. Start has one parameter p and it has to look like this. And so your pebble file must have a function called start that looks sort of like this. All of the lines um, within the start function are, um, are, are delineated by these brackets. Every uh, command is on a new line and there can't be anything in the file that isn't within a function. So there's only one function in this uh, experiment or program and let's see what it does. It will find this function and start r running the different commands. First it creates a window. It uses a function called make window and make window can take a number of arguments but the first argument here is um, black, the color of the background. You can set uh, almost there's hundreds of different color names you could use if you want to use a different color. Um, and importantly, if you create the window, you have to name it something because um, otherwise it will uh, go away. It will be created, but if, if it's not held on to by a variable, it will go away. And furthermore, you can't add anything to it like stimuli. And you want to be able to add instructions as stimuli to the window. So we create a window and assign it using this two character less than hyphen to a, a um, parameter, to a variable called gwin. Um, unlike function names, which all have to start with a capital letter, um, variables have to start with a lowercase letter. So g is a lowercase letter, and then it just this just indicates window. There's nothing special about gwin, except for that I tend to use it in all of the experiments. Um, furthermore, uh, because it starts with a G, the lowercase letter is a G, that means it's a global variable. Um, it'll be accessible to any function, even if I create a new function. As long as I've created it, that window will be accessible, so it can be handy so I don't have to pass around the window to different functions as much. But if it starts with another letter, like if I just called it window with a lowercase w, um, it wouldn't be accessible outside of this function. Um, once the wind is created, then I draw it. If I didn't draw it, then whatever I, whatever changes I made wouldn't appear 
even the background wouldn't appear. So I might get a blank window, but it, it wouldn't appear. And then it's just going to wait for me to make a key press. So it's going to do those three things. Now to um, look at this, we can make sure this is selected and say run selected test. You can see that um, actually it says it's tutorial one and a black window opened and it's not doing anything. I can click with the keyboard uh, with the mouse and nothing's happening. But if I hit any key on the keyboard, it goes away. You can see that the window that opened is exactly the same size as my screen, although I can move it around so it, it overlaps a little bit. Uh, just for our um, debugging purposes, let's change the screen size to make it a little smaller. Probably something like this will be fine. If I run this again, now I can uh, see around it. I can manage it a little better. And so we'll use a smaller screen size every time. And um, so if you want to know what would happen if I wrote an another command, um, I could say I could do something like this and after you press a key you draw and then you press a key again. If I were to run this I can hit a spacebar once and nothing happens. Hit a spacebar twice and then it's over. So you can see it will just follow along what whatever is going on here. Now, once it completes, some error and debugging messages will appear down here. And th this tells me uh, the screen size that it tried, and you can see that oh, it really did try 928 by 696. That's the screen size it used, um, even though this is the size of the display. And in error messages, it also prints out a lot of things, including um, things that it prints out at startup to help if there's an error. Um, the screen size again, um, information about the video driver, for example, hardware acceleration. And at the end, if there's any specific messages printed out, they'll appear here. So if I were to, if I were to, if I wanted to sort of follow along, I could use a command print. Sorry. Print point one and then print exiting. So if I were to run this again, nothing changes on the screen, but now I can see that point one had printed out and then exiting had printed out. So this can help me figure out where maybe errors would happen. Um, there's a couple different ways errors could happen. I could write something that isn't proper pebble code. So something like this. Uh, maybe I wanted to make a comment and a comment can start with, you can make a comment that starts like this. Don't do anything until the key is pressed. Now this line is proper because it's uh, commented out with this this hash sign, but this one is not, and it won't know what to do here. So if I try to run this, the screen doesn't appear, and if I go to error messages, it says line 10, syntax error. It doesn't know what to do, so it just says there's an error in the syntax. If I were to make um, that hash sign there as well, now everything's going to run, Clearance point one and exiting and so on. So that's it for the first tutorial. What we learned was how to write a very simple program, how to add print statements, how to add comments, um, how to change the screen size of the program you're running, and a little bit about variables and functions within, um, within a Pebble experiment. So stay tuned for the next where we'll try to do something a little more complicated with this.